Volume 2 Chapter 5.4 The Fate Flows Again You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Oops. What the? Damn it. Who is it? Oh no, Sir Klopp. There are people here. The two people lying on top of Klopp wriggled around without any intention of getting up quickly. Not only did they collide heavily when they fell, but while those wretched bastards crumpled him up like a cheap mattress, Klopp pondered to himself. Why? Why is no one helping him? That wolf bastard had to stay in that perfect place and made us end up here, yet why did these pigs still come here and do this? And why did these pigs, who can't even get their own offspring, choose today, of all days, to engage in such a mating act? Why here? Why did they have to interfere with this valuable time? And why? Why did I have this stupid idea to come to the concert organized by that damn count and propose here? This is all a curse. It's a curse. Finally, the two men rose up. Immediately, Klopp also got up from his spot. Raphael, with a worried gaze, asked, Are you okay? But Klopp silently moved away from him. It's unfortunate that they're having a date here. Ah, darn it. We were having such a nice time. Let's go somewhere else. They tried to leave without even apologizing, and Klopp grabbed one of their shoulders. The person slapped his hand away as if annoyed and turned around to look at him. What was that? It's nothing. Should I call it a wild dog hunt? Klopp smirked and grabbed the person's collar with one hand, forming a fist. And then, he swung his fist, pouring out all the irritation he had to endure today. Get up. You should take more punches. Ugh. Stop. Ah. Stop it. You crazy son of a bitch. Sir Klopp. Please. Klopp, without listening to the fed. Up Raphael who was trying to stop him, continued to twist the swollen neck of his opponent so much that his face became unrecognizable, and he swung his fist further. One of them was already half. Dead, writhing on the ground. If you alphas really wanted to mate each other, you should have done it where I couldn't see. You shouldn't have ruined an important proposal. The accumulated frustration since entering the estate, anger towards an inexplicable hostility, and the restlessness that had been bothering him all merged together, completely overwhelming Klopp's rationality. He knew he didn't need to be this angry and trampling. But strangely enough, lately, he'd found it hard to contain his anger. When an indescribable emotion surged to the top of his head, he felt like he'd die if he didn't vent it in some way, and most of the time, it ended with someone's sacrifice. Usually, he swung his cane at the bottom, but today, his opponents were just two unlucky alpha guys. As his fist struck forcefully, the opponent's nose broke, and blood gushed out. Klopp's fist wasn't unscathed either, and it would probably be difficult for him to grip a pen properly tomorrow. That's why he usually used his cane, but now he didn't have it, so there was nothing he could do. His fist was already covered in blood. Later, when the limp opponent let out exhaled ragged breath, blood spurted onto the enraged Alpha's face. Right next to him, dangling on the strong arm that held his opponent's throat, Raphael's face was also splashed with red blood, and in his tender heart, he rushed to Klopp's aid in a panic. However, Klopp didn't spare any attention to him. Raphael cried and asked what was wrong with him, and Klopp glared at the opponent who was whining and begging, pouring his anger into his words. Shut your filthy mouth, you dirty alphas who fuck with each other. Otherwise, you'll spend your whole life eating soup. The opponent trembled in fear and shut his mouth. After giving him a few more punches, Klopp pushed the unconscious companion, who had been groaning, aside. Unable to escape, the two were pinned down and passed out. It started with personal anger and annoyance, but now it had escalated into intense disgust for the sexual acts between alphas. It was the worst manifestation of debauchery. Klopp couldn't understand how alphas or omegas could engage in such disgusting behavior. 
It had become a casual affair among the decadent aristocracy to avoid creating children they couldn't be responsible for, or because they'd fallen in love with a heroine from a vulgar novel they could barely call literature, or because they'd been seduced by the myth that it was awesome. Even when they had spouses, they would enjoy it as a one-dot-time thing, sometimes also having an affair. But the disgust Klopp felt now wasn't because he was particularly prudish from a social or moral standpoint. As he punched until his fist hurt, Klopp realized where his recent restlessness and impatience had originated from. At the same time, he also realized the cause of his current anger. It was his self-hatred. The person who was dominating his rationality at the moment was the one who played the violin with a pale complexion as if he could collapse at any moment. Why did that guy keep coming to his mind? Everything was annoying and unnerving to him, but as soon as the thought that Alok might have feelings for Raphael crossed his mind, what he felt wasn't jealousy of Alok, but it was jealousy towards Raphael. There was no point in denying it. He wanted to quickly propose and firmly establish the relationship between them, to cut off any feelings that shouldn't or couldn't exist. But Klopp's plans had been disrupted by an unexpected intrusion. He dusted his swelling fist and cursed. His jacket was already wrinkled, and there were probably bloodstains here and there, Martha would probably scold him. He loosened his tie a little as he tilted his neck and wiped away the strands of hair that fell during his one-dot-sided beating. He sighed deeply while looking at the sky. Even with the light of the lanterns, it wasn't enough to find the small ring. He shrugged and scanned his surroundings. Raphael was nowhere to be seen. Raphael. Where did he go? I need to find him. I have to find the ring right away too. He must have been surprised. I've been careful on purpose. Klopp kicked the unconscious alphas and patted his surroundings in the dark shadows. He needed the ring. It was a mess, but he had to finish the proposal somehow. In the meantime, he heard several people approaching. Klopp half stood up and turned around to see the astonished host, the butler, and his tear-dot-stained lover, along with the wolf bastard whose presence and reason for coming were unknown. The startled Count, with wide eyes, exclaimed in an unusually loud voice. What have you done? I was teaching some manners to those rude bastards. A pale dot-faced Alok ran up and grabbed Klopp's hand, who shrugged nonchalantly. Then, with a stern expression, Alok said, you're hurt. He was almost on the verge of tears. Bed o de em, it's nothing. Nothing. Look at your face covered in blood. It's not my blood. Alok glared at Klopp and was about to retort, but Marquis Wolflake, who came here for unknown reasons, spoke up. He looks fine. But those two over there don't look fine at all. Can we just leave them like that? It could potentially lead to a major violence scandal. The butler was the one who responded. He instructed another maid who had just arrived, get a doctor. Bring the first aid kit bandages, clean towels, and water. Move quietly. Then he approached the two victims. The butler first wiped the blood from one's nose with a handkerchief and checked his pulse. Just how much did you hit them? TSK TSK. They're not dead. Did you intend to kill them? As the butler threw a sharp remark at Klopp, footmen appeared and carried the unconscious men into the inner room. The butler followed them along with the maid. A maid, holding another first aid kit, approached Klopp and said, Your hand needs to be treated. Alok took the bandage and began wrapping Klopp's hand tightly. When Klopp groaned in pain at how hard he was wrapping it, Alok's shoulders shook. You can't wrap it like that. Shut your mouth. The maid looked slightly concerned, alternating her gaze between Klopp and Alok. But who could break Alok's stubbornness? Klopp, the only one who could possibly restrain him, was too exhausted, so he sighed and let it be. Instead, he looked at Raphael, who was standing there with tears in his eyes. He was clutching his small chest tightly and sobbing. He felt sorry. Raphael. Even though he called him softly, Raphael was startled as if thunder had struck. 
he quickly closed his trembling lips and wiped away his tears with the back of his hand. Alok, equally startled, approached him. Count, I, ah, uh, right. Of course, Raphael should do it. Oh, yes. Here. As Alok handed over the bundle of bandages, his hand trembled, and the round piece of cloth rolled on the floor. Raphael picked it up, and with an anxious look, he glanced briefly at Klopp before turning away. Raphael swiftly unraveled the haphazardly wrapped bandage. Then, he turned to the maid standing beside him and asked, Do you have a cold towel? It seems like we need to compress his hand. Please come to the inner estate. Cold water will be prepared. Thank you. Guided by the maid, Klopp and Raphael left their seats. As they passed through the entrance of the garden, the silent Marquis and the slightly agitated Count behind them had their gaze fixed on their backs. Aside from the emotional Count today, Klopp wanted to know what the hell was going on with the Marquis. Although he had vented enough, Klopp still had some fire in him. He clenched his fist tightly, his teeth gritting down. Raphael, who was walking beside him with his arm wrapped around Klopp's waist for support, sensed it and looked up at him with surprise in his eyes. Feeling guilty for continuously scaring him, Klopp forced a smile as he swallowed his anger. I'm sorry. I just ruined the whole plan. It's okay, as long as you're okay, that's all that matters. Raphael didn't look okay at all, but Klopp didn't say anything. Instead, he pulled Raphael closer, his hand throbbing with pain. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 5.5 The Fate Flows Again You are listening at NovelFull.audio Considering the guest list for today, it was obvious that whoever the two alphas he had knocked down were, they would cause some headaches for him in the future. But Klopp couldn't think of anything right now. Despite having vented as much as he could, there was still lingering inexplicable anxiety, restlessness, and anger. He only wanted to make sure that the small and beautiful Omega wouldn't get startled anymore, so he made an effort to smile. There wasn't much commotion among the Count's guests. However, those who knew exchanged serious glances. The two beaten alphas were influential figures in their respective families, and would undoubtedly cause a big stir if their parents found out the truth that they were engaging in the trend between alphas. The butler quickly arranged for a doctor to come and treat the two alphas before sending them home. Meanwhile, Klopp tried to see Raphael off, but Raphael declined, saying he was all right. You're injured, you should rest. But I have something to tell you. Do it at another time. With some hesitation, Raphael left a kiss on Klopp's cheek and boarded the carriage that came to pick him up. As the carriage door closed, Klopp kissed Raphael's hand that was resting on the window sill, filled with remorse. Yes, next time. I'll be waiting for you. Raphael smiled, lowering his gaze. After the carriage departed, Klopp felt extremely depressed, filled with disappointment in himself and regret for disappointing his lover. His chest felt heavy, and he had no energy left. He was about to ask one of the footmen to call a carriage when Alok appeared out of nowhere and intervened. It's late, go rest. I'll prepare a room for you. There's no need for that. You caused an accident in my house. Just in case the victim's family contacts us, stay here tonight. Regardless, it was them who initiated the violence. He made it clear to the Count, who could be a key witness in future conflicts, to firmly take his side's justification. Of course, that's true for you. But you can't deny that it was a one-dot-sided assault. And those were influential members of a family that cannot be disregarded in society. Do you mean that it's wrong for someone powerless and rankless to provoke noble individuals? Alok sneered and raised his voice with a contorted expression. That's not what I meant. They will seek revenge against you no matter what. And I'm not the type to just sit back and take it. The Count who was frozen in place still glared at him with his pale face. His shoulders trembled slightly. I know that about you better than anyone in this world. But for tonight, stay at this estate. 
you must be tired. Very well, then. In truth, Klopp was indeed tired, and as a legal expert, he knew there were various problems at hand. But, above that, seeing Alok's exhausted and sad expression, he couldn't help but give in without putting up a fight. If he went back right now, Martha probably wouldn't open the door for him, and staying a night in this spacious estate wouldn't cause a big issue for the owner. Moreover, since the incident occurred in this estate, the Count would end up getting involved. It was better to do as he wanted for the trivial matters. Soon, a maid appeared and guided Klopp to a guest room. Despite Klopp thanking him, Alok didn't respond and went somewhere else without a word. The room the maid showed him was the one he had stayed in when he had first been invited to the estate. Left alone, Klopp felt frustrated and threw off his jacket, loosening his tie and unbuttoning a few buttons on his collar. Then he opened the window and stepped out onto the terrace. The cool night air cooled his heated head. Leaning against the terrace railing, Klopp gazed at the distant sky before lowering his gaze down. From the window of this room on the second floor, he had a clear view of the rose garden. Now that the soiree ended, the area had been tidied up, left with only tables and chairs. As the servants passed by, extinguishing the lanterns, the lights gradually went out one by one. It was as if the light of the flowers was fading. The blowing breeze felt cool. Klopp closed his eyes and deeply breathed in the air, then exhaled. A faint scent of roses lingered. Today had been a complete mess. He wouldn't have come to the estate in the first place if he knew it would turn out like this. Pursuing an incompatible romance had only ruined everything. The last look of his disappointed lover haunted him. He would have to do something extraordinary to make up for this mistake. However, no matter how much he thought, nothing came to mind. He should have kept it simple, just like his personality. Wait, but what happened to the ring? He opened his eyes wide, stood up, and searched his pockets. He looked at the jacket he'd thrown on the bed and remembered. He'd been looking for it after it fell, but he had completely forgotten about it because those other people showed up. Cursing under his breath, Klopp left the room. In the rose garden, where everyone, including the guests, musicians, and servants, had left, only a chilly breeze blew. Klopp hurriedly rushed out without even putting on his jacket and borrowed a lamp from a passing maid, almost snatching it from her, and headed to where he had beaten those guys from before. The ring was incredibly important. It wasn't about its value, but because it was a special order from a high dot end shop where Viscount Derbyshire had written a special recommendation himself. If he lost the ring on top of ruining the proposal, it wouldn't just be a simple incident, it would be a significant problem for Klopp's reputation. Although that seemed to already happen. Dot he scanned the area illuminated by the lamp, feeling around with his hand, but all he found were rose petals and silk ribbons that hadn't been cleared away. Some might think this act was very romantic, but it only annoyed Klopp. He searched for a while but couldn't find it. He couldn't even see the box. Even if finding the ring was difficult, he had thought he would quickly find the box. But no matter how much he searched, the box was nowhere to be seen. Damn it. Where is that goddamn ring? He bent down and searched until his back ached and the muscles in his back pulled. He didn't even notice someone approaching from behind. So when he heard a calm voice saying, you don't have to look for it, he was startled. Turning around, he saw the Count with a faint smile on his face. What? Aren't you looking for this? Glaring at him, Klopp straightened his back and stood up as the Count approached, extending a small box in his hand. It was the ring box, and the ring was still inside. Klopp looked slightly impressed as he looked at him. And Alok smiled again. It seemed that Klopp could now sense a slight difference in his smile. It didn't appear to be a teasing or joyful smile but rather a somewhat awkward and sad one. How did you know? The butler found it earlier. It wasn't a bad excuse, except that he knew the butler had been busier than Klopp or Alok in treating and sending those two alphas back. Before Klopp could ask how Alok knew it was his ring, Alok broke the awkward atmosphere first. 
it seems that your proposal didn't go well. As he smiled again on his pretty face, something stirred in Klopp. It wasn't because the proposal had gone wrong or because the Count was mocking him. It was a kind of poignant sadness that seeped through. Even now, he could still hear the violin in his ears. It wasn't just a performance, maybe it was a plea. Why was the Count so entangled like this? Klopp had an impulse to see the Count's pale face getting contorted with a genuine appearance, just as he was, not with a mask dot like smile. Even when his beloved lover had just left him with tears on his face, he only wondered how Alok T. Wind would look on the bed. His lower body felt a surge of heat. This was the worst. He was still holding the engagement ring in his hand. Unable to deal with his torn feelings, he could only express himself with a grim expression and curt words. Thank you for finding it. I apologize for causing trouble today, but there's no need for you to meddle in other people's personal lives. The corners of Alok's mouth curled up at the cold response. His eyes weren't smiling at all. Instead, they held a depth of indescribable sorrow. Alok's expression didn't match his gaze, just like Klopp's actions were different from his feelings. Right. You can handle it on your own. I apologize for meddling. I just, Alok, who was turning away while answering in a stiff tone, paused for a moment. He stared at Klopp who was deliberately ignoring him, only looking at his direction. It's just unfortunate that your preparations didn't lead to a good outcome. That's all, really. Leaving behind these words, he disappeared into the other side of the garden, as if carried away by the wind. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 5.6 The Fate Flows Again You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Finding the ring was a relief, but Klopp didn't expect to meet someone who would cause him to feel such inner turmoil and conflict. He had barely managed to suppress the turmoil he felt earlier, but now it had intensified. It had been an exhausting and challenging day, and he didn't feel like he could fall asleep in this chaotic state of mind. Since he was already out, he thought it would be better to take a walk. He placed the lamp on the nearby stone steps and put the ring back in his pocket. Then, he walked along the pale moonlit gravel path. The burning fire within his ribcage and the freezing ice coiled together, causing him great distress. It would have been better if one of them devoured the other, either burning everything or freezing it all. His swollen hands hurt, and his mind was complicated. With the proposal going awry, he had to think about how to please Raphael, but for some reason, all he could think about was the person he had just met. An intense thirst arose, one that was deeply unsatisfying and unpleasant. Whether he was present or not, irritability and anger surged within him. What made it even more unbearable was that just the thought of his disheveled blonde hair and blue eyes was enough to ignite an uncontrollable desire. He acknowledged that the reason for him beating those guys earlier wasn't just because he was interrupted and angry. The burning fire and freezing ice within him intensified. Klopp took a cold breath in and exhaled a hot one, taking step after step. It seemed like this walk was going to be a long one. The serene night garden, reflected in the blue moonlight, seemed like a world standing on the vague boundary. As the night wore on, the wind blew considerably chillier, but it actually cooled his head. Unlike the burning back of his hands, his fingertips quickly turned cold. Klopp walked through the garden, slowly embracing the coldness that had been building up. Lost in his thoughts, he found himself in a secluded corner where cedar trees stood in a row, the same ones when he first came to this estate and lost his way to the rose garden. The path shimmered gracefully, completely different from his memory. Back then, the breaking sunlight sparkled intensely, as if curtains made of light were fluttering. But now, it was completely different. The pale moonlight did not drive away the shadows but rather dyed the edges it touched with darkness. The great, soundless pillars did little more than split the light that seeped in like mist, obscuring the pitiful celestial bodies that could not shine themselves. Only the pebbles hidden in the deep shadows cried out with small screams under the weight of someone's heavy steps. How do I get back from here? 
maybe I should turn right toward the estate in the distance. Guessing the directions, Klopp walked along the path, illuminated by the barely dot their moonlight. The cobblestones glinted in the reflection, resembling stars in the deep night sky. Dot as he passed through the shadows of the towering trees, something caught his eye up ahead. Between the repeating silhouette of the cedar trees, like a broken kaleidoscope, there was someone standing in the shadows. Unconsciously, he quickened his strides and approached. Standing there absent-mindedly, without a single lamp, was Alok. It seemed he hadn't returned to the estate earlier. The moment Klopp saw him, the fragile balance maintained inside him was instantly shattered, replaced by a rampage of something he couldn't quite name yet. Why is he wandering around at night without a lamp? Of course, Klopp himself was guilty of the same, but he was a person having troubling events on his plate. He couldn't understand what had happened to that guy to make him act so pitifully as if he had borne all the sorrow and suffering of the world since the concert. It was getting on his nerves to see Alok standing beneath the moonlight, staring vacantly at the moon. At the same time, Klopp had no desire to approach him, strike up a conversation, or pretend to notice him. Since their first encounter, every meeting with Alok managed to unsettle him, turning him into a poem, constructed with artistic devices in a space-time realm, merely listing facts without rhetorical ploys. It was better to pass by quietly. He took a few more steps, then stopped and reconsidered. It would be better to turn back than to continue forward. As he swiftly turned his body, a chilly wind blew, carrying a strangely provocative scent. It was an odd smell, smelling neither like Alpha nor Omega. No, it smells quite like an Omega. He wondered if there was a newlywed couple nearby, but it was a silly idea. Apart from himself, there was only Alok in this vast garden. As usual, just like how his body had often reacted to it before, Klopp couldn't help but grow increasingly turned on by the scent. It was extremely embarrassing, but since there was no one to see him here except for Alok, the only Alpha present on this dark night, he didn't consider it a problem. Alok wasn't a person who would blatantly stare at that spot so intently to notice his small problem on this dark night. More than that, just when had Alok been involved with an Omega to the point where their sense became a jumbled mess? Lewd bastard. It seemed like he hadn't even had the time to get a room for himself. It was a waste of the moon, the garden, the wind, and the shadows. To waste such beautiful scenery by indulging in the afterglow of a love affair. What an utter idiot, or not. He quickly felt unpleasant again. He was so disgusted by his arousal in response to Alok's lingering scent of his affair that he decided to turn back immediately. However, he stopped once again on the way. In this current state of irritation, he might as well say what he had planned to say since early evening. This guy paid enough expense to buy a whole house just for a soiree, and if he was going to sleep with someone like that until his body scent was filthy, there was a good chance he was going to cause a serious financial crisis with all his presence. He needed to give him a warning right away. This guy could lose a house overnight, so there was no time to lose. His turn dot on body and anger at Alok's unknown partner were irrelevant. He was merely giving professional advice as an investment agent and asset manager. The matter was so urgent that Klopp briskly walked and stood behind Alok in a single stride. Alok was so engrossed in himself, that he was unaware of Klopp approaching him until Klopp rested his hands on his shoulders. Hey, you. Calling out with a slightly angry voice, Alok was startled. He jumped and swiftly turned around, forcefully slapping Klopp's arm away as he did. Due to turning too quickly, he lost his balance and stumbled backward. It seemed like he was about to fall. Ah. Oh, my. Klopp reflexively reached out an arm to support Alok's slightly skinny back. Although Alok wasn't particularly large, but he was a fit alpha, so Klopp wobbled as he tried to support him. After a struggle, they both regained their balance. Unintentionally, Klopp naturally wrapped his arm around Alok's waist and pulled him closer. Alok grabbed the vest of the person who had held onto him with both hands and let out a deep sigh, lifting his head. 
Their gazes intertwined, and for a moment, the awkwardness of their close proximity gave Klopp a great shock. In the moonlight, clear tears streamed down Alok's wet blue eyes. Alok. Ah, at the sound of his name, Alok, who had unwittingly come to his senses, grimaced in embarrassment and quickly pulled away from Klopp. Then, he roughly wiped the corners of his eyes with the palm of his hand. Alok's faint mask was shattered, he looked incredibly sad and pained. The emptiness in his arms, which had felt so satisfying just a brief moment ago, made him become angry once again, and at the same time, right, he felt extremely sorry. It was enough to realize that it hurt his heart. Why was he crying? Who made him cry? The Omega who he had an affair with. That was most likely it. Did you have a heartbreak? The words that came out of nowhere sounded sarcastic even to his own ears. While Klopp was inwardly flustered, Alok lowered the hand that was rubbing his eyes and raised the corner of his mouth, smiling. Turning his head slightly, he glanced in this direction with trembling lips. I can get hurt too. Klopp couldn't make sense of that absurd response. What's with him? Did he really have a heartbreak, or is there something else going on with him? Klopp remained silent and stared into his wet blue eyes. He couldn't look away from him. The shock was too much. No matter how much Alok wiped away his tears, they continued to fall, soon smearing his face and dampening the back of his hand. For him to cry this much, he must have loved someone so deeply and had a falling out with them. He didn't expect the arrogant aristocrat could cry that pitifully. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 5.7 The Fate Flows Again You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Come to think of it, until just a while ago, there was nothing unusual about his scent, but it was weird that it suddenly changed. It wasn't something that could happen in just a few hours. Or perhaps he had been meeting an Omega for a while, and until now, he had been careful to hide their scent. If that's the case, that means he only gave his body for them and couldn't win their heart. But he's the Count. He's the Alok T. Wind. How dare someone do that? Which Omega took the Count and played him like a puppet? Klopp was getting multiple shocks. But why did he suddenly feel so furious, wanting to strangle that stupid and pathetic bastard who takes advantage of a perfectly fine alpha. Being swayed by incomprehensible emotions was a very unpleasant thing. He wanted to give up on tormenting the unknown person who wasn't even in front of him and couldn't even confirm their existence. He sarcastically sneered, his voice twisted by jealousy he couldn't understand. If you were heartbroken, it might be better for you to not wander around at night drenched with a scent that would make you pass as an omega. You might end up in a situation with more than a little embarrassment if an alpha passed by and mistook you as one. Alok, whose tears hadn't dried, smiled again and retorted, as long as it's not you. Although it wasn't a particularly malicious statement, Klopp felt as if sanity was slipping away. Even without that, he was constantly getting turned on, and now that he could even smell Alok's intoxicating scent which was enough to make his head hurt, he almost lost control of his self-restraint. He clenched his fists tightly. His hand, pressed against the bandage, throbbed with pain, but it seemed to bring him back to his senses. Since it's not my concern, you can act however you want with your body, whether as an alpha or omega. But I hope you'll choose someone who doesn't spend money excessively. He finally managed to utter the words he had intended to say for a while now. It was becoming agonizing to keep looking at him. Why did Alok have to be an alpha? Klopp bit down on it and glared at Alok. His tears that had dried started to fall again. What's this? Did you really have a heartbreak? Klopp said sarcastically with a furrowed brow, and Alok wiped away his tears with his already damp hand. Then, without retorting, he turned away from Klopp, intending to leave. That response seemed to come from his sarcasm, as Alok deliberately nudged his shoulder while passing by. The remaining shred of Klopp's shallow self-restraint was completely shattered. Klopp reached out and grabbed the wrist of the figure that had moved a few steps away. Hey! 
It came out as a loud shout fueled by his rising anger. Despite Klopp gripping it tightly, Alok swung his arm vigorously to push Klopp away. At that moment, his tear-dot-dampened hand grazed Klopp's lips. Like a slap, it was quite painful. In an instant, anger surged to his head, he grabbed Alok's wrist again as if he were about to break it. You. It hurts, let me go. With eyes burning with simmering rage, Klopp glared at Alok, who was now shedding tears while averting his gaze. Something damp trickled down his lips. When Klopp touched his lips with his other hand, there was clear moisture. It seemed to be the tears that dampened Alok's hand when it collided with his lips a moment ago. On instinct, Klopp licked the cold substance on his lips. It tasted sweet. Wait, sweet. For a moment, Klopp forgot that he was still in anger. Alok's tears tasted sweet. What is this? As he wiped away the tears that touched his lips with his other finger, Alok looked extremely bewildered. I apologize. Apologizing in a wet voice, his tears continued to fall. The air felt incredibly awkward. What was he doing, holding on to a person he didn't want to run into on this moonlit night? After letting go of Alok's wrist, which Klopp had tightly grasped, Alok rubbed his wrist with his other hand and turned his gaze in other directions. I hope you forget what you saw today, if you feel even the slightest remorse for the violent incidents you caused today. A little quick and sarcastic in tone, Alok soon turned and walked away to the mansion. Klopp stared blankly at his retreating figure. After Alok disappeared into the darkness, Klopp licked the moisture still clinging to his index and middle fingers. It was undeniably sweet. This can't be right. He's an alpha. What is with that guy? Is his body made of sugar or something? The walk he'd begun to take to clear his foggy head and ease his heavy heart had only reaffirmed his unsatisfied lust and added to his unanswered questions. Really, every meeting with the Count had only resulted in troubles. He knew it wasn't a particularly favorable situation, but the anger of Viscount Westport regarding his violence turned out to be more intense than he had imagined. The Viscount would usually invite Klopp to his home when he wanted to nag him, but this time, he unusually came to his office in the center of town and asked for some time away. You don't have to worry about that. It was because they were very rude to me then. I'm well aware of that. But you did that just because of a minor thing. It's not advisable to go into a frenzy over something like that, and besides, your name is now all over social circles. You can't have an engagement like this. At least until the rumors die down. After the Viscount's unilateral declaration, Klopp found it increasingly difficult to meet with Raphael. Whenever he tried to send letters through various routes, there was no response from Raphael. Viscount Westport, who was meticulous when it came to matters concerning his children, pushed Klopp away with various excuses. Later on, they managed to meet by coincidence at a tea party hosted by a certain aristocrat, but Raphael told him with a very sad expression. My father is very angry. It's not about you fighting, but about how I tried to stop you, and you didn't listen. I'm sorry. Raphael lowered his gaze to the ground, shaking his head. Lately, his complexion hadn't been good. It didn't seem like a health issue, but perhaps the clashes of opinions with his father were bothering him. But Klopp had nothing much he could say. He could only hope that the Viscount Westport would quickly calm his anger. The scandal that was expected to die down over time didn't seem to fade away. Not only the victims were the children of prominent families, but someone was constantly spreading hostile rumors about Klopp. Later, during their business discussion, Klopp heard about it from the Viscount Derbyshire. You got into a fight, didn't you? Did you hear about it? I hear things even when I don't want to. So, how bad was it? There are rumors flying around about blood splattering everywhere and bone fragments flying. The voice of Viscount Derbyshire, sipping his tea, somehow sounded cheerful, and Klopp frowned for a moment. He told it as it was, without hiding anything about what had happened, and Viscount Derbyshire became even more enthusiastic, interjecting while holding his cup. Oh, really? 
So. Oh ho ho. That's what happened, huh? When the story was over, he put down his cooled tea and patted Klopp's shoulder. It felt like his shoulder was about to break from the strong force. Of course, alphas can also throw punches. You don't need to avoid those idiots who come at you. And I don't like those guys either. You did well. Hopefully, they'll learn some self. Restraint and stop their lowly behavior in the future. Klopp had thought that Viscount Derbyshire wouldn't scold him, but he didn't expect to receive praise from him too. He smirked and drank his tea. But, by the way, do you know Marquis Wolflake? I just know his name and face. We don't have any particular connection. Klopp stiffened slightly at the sudden mention of a name he didn't like. Viscount Derbyshire placed both hands on his ample belly and comfortably leaned back in his armchair. You don't know him. That's strange. A few days ago, I met with Viscount Westport, and he was there too. He seemed to have a strong grudge against you. He said you guys were together in Tea Wind. Yes. It might have been just a coincidence, but he witnessed the incident that day. I also remember feeling bothered because he had been weirdly staring at me before that. Really? Itchem. Well, this is troublesome. Viscount Derbyshire clicked his tongue and lowered his head. Then he looked at Klopp, who didn't understand his words, and gave a bitter smile. You should give up on this marriage. The Viscount Westport is a strange man who clings to his sons like a patient with obsessive-compulsive disorder. He seemed to have made up his mind. He could tell from Viscount Derbyshire's expression without even asking what was on his mind. Despite believing in his capabilities, Viscount Westport didn't think that Klopp's abilities would make him a good husband. He was also urging them to break up before they got engaged. The reason behind their potential breakup seemed insignificant, but it seemed that Klopp's anger and his behavior in front of Rayfield played a significant role. Honestly speaking, he was venting out his anger. Klopp had to admit that. It wasn't surprising that the victim didn't press charges, considering their ongoing secretive affair. Moreover, the two alphas must be embarrassed by the fact they got beaten by an alpha, so they chose to keep it hidden. Of course, Klopp had given compensation, which resulted in a setback for his hard-earned wedding funds. In retrospect, that was the final straw. Viscount Westport's concern was about how Klopp could support Raphael and their future children if Klopp ever lost money again through such violence. The reason Viscount Westport and his family held Klopp in high regard was that he was a self-controlled, honest, and hard-working man. It wasn't because he was an exceptional son from a great household or had significant wealth. This meant that if Klopp had any flaws of his own, they wouldn't need to give their precious Omega son to him. It was the rationality of a cold-hearted aristocrat. Fortunately, before this incident, Klopp had a good reputation, and Viscount Derbyshire, who cherished him, held considerable influence in social circles. When rumors started to spread, Viscount Derbyshire quickly quelled them, saying, Alphas have their temperaments, that's how they are, and put an end to them. Thanks to this, even after their breakup, his business was unaffected. Raphael was deeply saddened, but he didn't love Klopp enough to defy his parents and escape with him. Similarly, Klopp didn't love Raphael to the extent of demanding such a sacrifice. Although they had been in a relationship for a considerable time, it was difficult for them to develop a deep relationship considering the times they couldn't meet due to Klopp's busy schedule. They had never even spent a heat together. It was not that their hearts didn't ache, but it wasn't to the point where they couldn't live without each other. They felt sad, but what they had was a relationship where, if it turned out they were not fated, they could let each other go, just that much. After the breakup was decided, Raphael secretly left his estate to meet Klopp without his father's knowledge. At that time, Klopp, who was burdened with heavy thoughts and focused only on work, smiled softly upon seeing him in the office. The two walked together on a secluded path, while a carriage belonging to the Viscount followed behind. So, it ended up like this. This is because my father is very stubborn. No, it's all my fault. 
Sir Klopp. Klopp glanced at the coachman who was looking in their direction and led Rayfield to a shady alley. The coachman stopped the carriage and turned his head in another direction. Klopp held Rayfield's hands and kissed the back of his hands. Even though he understood their circumstances, parting was still upsetting. Tears welled up in Rayfield's eyes once again. They closed their eyes and exchanged a brief kiss as a farewell. The first and last kiss in the slightly smelly alley wasn't exactly poetic. Klopp wiped the tears from Rayfield's wet cheeks with his thumb, then kissed his forehead and hugged him tightly. Rayfield also hugged him back tightly, but he soon let go. They didn't bid farewell from afar. In the few steps it took for them to reach the carriage, none of them said a word. Rayfield didn't look back at Klopp as he boarded the carriage. Watching the carriage going far away, Klopp soon turned around. On his way back to the office, he saw the tear stains on his fingertips and unconsciously licked them. It tasted bitter and salty. Tears were normally indeed bitter and salty. That guy was the abnormal one. Did he take any drugs? He threw the engagement ring on the desk. And then, he forgot about it. This marks the end of Volume 2 Chapter 5. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 6.1 The Right One Runs Away You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio His warning to Alok that he would terminate their contract if he held another soiree seemed to have worked, Alok had been quiet so far. As his relationship with Raphael was over and his troublesome client calmed down, Klopp became more dedicated to his work than ever before. He lost track of time and dates. Even though Viscount Derbyshire felt very bad for Klopp and brought new marriage prospects for him, but Klopp pretended to still be struggling with his breakup and made a distant face, so Viscount Derbyshire went easy with him. That nagging aristocrat quickly gave up, thinking that Klopp was still romanticizing. As Klopp only focused on his work, his wealth increased rapidly. Before the year ended, he was able to purchase a better house, silencing Martha's naggings. Although she felt very sorry about the breakup, she was too absorbed in renovating the new home to care about Klopp. Klopp's wealth was steadily accumulating thanks to the efficient and thrifty housekeeper. It seemed like soon he could afford to buy a grand estate. Moreover, this was also due to the Count who had no sense of currency, who had just barged through the office door as if he was about to break it down. He demanded, is it true that you called off your engagement as if Klopp had made a terribly huge mistake? Why do you always barge in late at night without any appointments? Alok was more agitated than ever, almost ready to jump over the desk, not hearing Klopp's complaint as he sat at the desk, reviewing documents. Alok was leaning so close to the desk, causing some file documents to shake. Worried that the inkwell might spill, Klopp quickly closed and locked the lid, while Alok seemed ready to grab his collar and interrogate him. Is it true that you called off your engagement? It's true that our engagement got called off, but why are you the one making such a fuss? Klopp retorted coldly, displeased with such an intrusive question when he wanted to keep things quiet. And he hates it more because it's coming from Alok T. Wind. Yet, Alok, seemingly unaware of Klopp's dismissive tone, screamed with a pale and tired face as if the world was about to crumble. But you loved Raphael. Enough to devote your whole life to him. Now Klopp was taken aback. Even the person who had gone through the breakup didn't have such intense emotions, so he couldn't understand why Alok was acting this way. He couldn't find the right words to say and simply stared blankly at Alok. Awkward silence continued, and Alok, realizing that he had become overly agitated, suddenly closed his mouth and took a hurried step back from the desk. However, his pale and tired expression didn't change. Looking at Klopp with anxious eyes, like a lost child in an unfamiliar place, there was no trace of a smile on his face. Worried that the silence would only deepen and become irreparable, Klopp deliberately asked in a light tone. I don't recall any memories of loving him so much. Who told you that? Of course, it's obvious Alok couldn't find the words to argue. He blinked a few times, opened and closed his mouth, then eventually dropped his head. 
His shoulders shook slightly, and he clenched his fist tightly as if trying to control something internally. Klopp really had no idea what he was trying to accomplish. Even if his workaholic days were boring, it was still a peaceful daily routine. Klopp knew that Alok would mess up this routine again. If it was like before, he would have gotten angry and kicked Alok out. But now he had half given up. He also felt a desire to see to what extent Alok would go. Perhaps Alok noticed that Klopp was observing him, he lifted his gaze from the ground, straightened his posture, raised his head high with his shoulders back, and even formed his faint smile again. It was as if he never shouted, he was pretending to be nonchalant. It had become something he could do without any trouble. However, the way Alok tried to wrap up his agitation that had not yet calmed down was almost cute to Klopp. Klopp wondered how urgently Alok had rushed here that he didn't even have time to put on gloves, and as he brushed his fallen hair with his bare hands, Alok apologized in a calm voice. I apologize for my sudden rudeness. Then he lightly nodded his head. It was so absurd that it made Klopp chuckle. Now Klopp couldn't bear it any longer. When Klopp's tall figure stood up from the desk, Alok was surprised and tried to leave as quickly as he had entered here. But Klopp couldn't let him go that easily. There were consequences in disturbing someone who was quietly minding their own business. With quick steps, past the office, when Alok had just tugged at the doorknob, Klopp fully displayed the advantage of his long legs and slammed the half-dot-open door shut with a bang using his hand. Trapped between the door and Klopp, Alok continued to turn the doorknob without turning back. Klopp whispered with a hint of sarcasm. Why are you leaving in such a hurry? Let's have a talk while you're here. Let's do that next time, come to my estate. Now. Klopp noticed the trembling voice of the man who replied in a nervous manner, and his attention was drawn to the fair nape of his neck. His neatly arranged hair looked incredibly soft. Using his other hand that wasn't gripping the door, Klopp grabbed Alok's waist and made him turn toward himself. As Alok's stiff body was half dot forcibly turned, he looked up at Klopp with a frightened expression. At that moment, his blue eyes trembled, and his scent wafted through the air. It was a mixed scent of the sharpness of an alpha and the sweetness of an omega, it smelled vulgar unlike an elegant aristocrat's, yet it was also very arousing. At that moment, Klopp made a really big, emphasizing again, tremendous effort, to avoid succumbing to his secretive and persistent lust towards this man, wanting to mess him up right then and there. Setting aside that he was lusting for an alpha, he knew it was really necessary to talk to him first. Klopp had always found this noble count's behavior perplexing to the point of being incomprehensible. From suddenly inviting Rayfield despite having almost no contact with the Westport family, to unreasonably organizing an extravagant soiree that he enjoyed. Alok seemed to know too much about Klopp and his relationship. He had cried during his marriage proposal as if he had gone through a heartbreak, and he was more concerned about the broken engagement than the parties involved. Perhaps Alok engaging in a physical relationship with someone to the extent of having omega pheromones was a way to vent his jealousy. It was understandable given he's an alpha at his prime age. The fact that he even picked up someone else's engagement ring shows that he was trying to be polite. But if he intended to be polite, he shouldn't provoke an alpha who was not feeling well with a broken engagement, right? Alok stiffened slightly and glanced at Klopp, but quickly averted his gaze. His head was held high, and he stood confidently without a trace of tremor. However, his hand gripping the doorknob trembled futilely. Klopp chuckled and asked. Did you have feelings for Raphael? The person trapped within the boundaries of intimacy met his gaze and let out a short breath as if dismissing it. Narrowing his eyes and staring fiercely, he seemed to look at him like he was a pathetic person. So maybe that wasn't, the correct conclusion. No, as expected, Alok responded coldly. Then how would you explain all your incomprehensible actions up until this point? What's wrong with my actions? Now that his trembling had subsided, Alok was radiating with a small amount of anger, so Klopp was pushing against him slowly. He had to keep his voice as calm as possible to avoid showing that he was worked up. 
being in such close proximity, his words would likely be heard loud enough. He could hear the sound of their hurried breaths. Alok's complexion grew paler as Klopp spoke with a slightly scratchy voice. Rushing over to confirm the news of someone else's broken engagement is unlike an ordinary person's reaction. Hearing his sarcastic remark, Alok glared sharply at Klopp again. But, somewhere in his expression, he looked as if he was about to cry. Just like when he ranted at him under the cedar tree before. Is it a problem to be unordinary? I expect my customers to have the most common sense. I don't remember the words, ordinary or, common sense, were in the contract, but if you don't like it, we can terminate it. Klopp couldn't understand why Alok suddenly veered in that direction. The Count's already limited patience was quickly running out. As Alok kept answering nonsensically, Klopp grabbed Alok's arm and growled. Don't change the topic. Just what are you hiding? I'm not hiding anything. And even if I were. It's none of your business. Now he was on the verge of getting angry, but Alok pushed away Klopp's arm that was grabbing his wrist. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 6.2 The Right One Runs Away You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Can an investment agent treat their employer so recklessly? You're going over the line. A cold accusation poured out of Alok's mouth. Then he bit his lip and added with a trembling voice. Back off. What are you doing with a fellow Alpha? As an aristocrat, you should maintain your dignity. He showed signs of discomfort, but Klopp, who had no intention of stepping back and only wanting to get closer, defiantly leaned in even closer. What, are you doing? The trembling voice barely reached his ears. Klopp chuckled and lowered his head to Alok's ear. It's something I just learned recently. There's not much distinction between Alpha and Omega these days. As a distinguished aristocrat, you must be aware of social trends, right? Upon hearing this, Alok stared at Klopp in contemplation. His blue eyes widened and his trembling lips couldn't close. He looked frozen, like an anxious Omega on the verge of heat. He had already broken up and shown violence, yet the guy who was making him feel worked up was acting like an Omega. He was already having unfulfilled desires, this was really stressing his mind. That damn trend. Other people would be disgusting to him, but if it were Alok, it seemed entirely possible. His scent was refreshing, yet sweet, it was strangely familiar. Even his arms fit perfectly around Alok's waist, which was quite slender for an alpha. His waist felt like it was made for Klopp's arms. It wasn't overly full or insufficiently thin. Klopp pulled him closer. As he pressed their bodies closer, his turn dot on touched the side of Alok's hip, and Alok pushed him away in surprise. However, his resistance was so weak that Klopp doubted whether he was genuinely pushing him away. Without hesitation, Klopp lowered his head and buried his nose in the fair nape that had been cluttering his vision since earlier. The scent was so enticing that it made his head spin. At this rate, no matter how many times he relieved himself, his excitement wouldn't subside. He moved his lips and lightly bit the nape of the elastic neck, and Alok, who had been trying to push him away, stiffened. Alok became tense and shuddered slightly. Klopp moved his hand, caressing under his lower back, then moving downward. He could feel Alok's toned, smooth hips and thighs nervously contracting beneath his thin pants. When the large hand reached an intolerable spot, Alok slightly held his breath, tensed his hips, and twisted his body to escape from his grasp. But it only drew him closer to Klopp. Touching the sensitively turned dot on body, Klopp could tell that Alok was also aroused. What's this? It seems like you don't dislike it. Surprisingly, when he laughed and teased him, the pale dot faced Count blushed instantly. He seemed embarrassed and slightly angry, but surprisingly, there was no sign of disgust. The stiffness of his body also seemed to be caused by his excitement. Thinking in his head, the sweet Omega scent was very unappealing and made him want to tear the faceless bastard to shreds right now, 
and then messily violate Alok next to his corpse. However, his body, which had abandoned his reasoning from long ago, disagreed. The sweet scent, which felt as natural as Alok's own scent, made Klopp want to knock him down right away. Regardless, the conclusion was the same. Klopp chuckled and slid his lips behind Alok's burning ear. The man in his arms drew in a breath and protested in an unsteady voice. You were the one who beat the Alphas, calling them disgusting. They are not you. The shallow, trembling breath came to a halt. The strength in the hand that was pushing him away diminished. The Count turned his gaze away and bit his lip. He seemed to have given up. Satisfied that Alok had no more intention of fleeing, Klopp, who had been holding onto the door, lowered his hand and wrapped his arms around the white nape of Alok's neck. He gently caressed the slightly stiff side of his neck and then ran his fingers down his back. Are you really sure that you don't have feelings for Raphael? I absolutely don't. He tightened his grip on the back of Alok's neck, making his head tilt a little. He put his own forehead on the spotlessly clean forehead. They leaned in at an angle, and their eyelashes lightly brushed against each other, ticklish. A moment later, Alok's relieved breath reached his ear. Klopp couldn't believe himself. He didn't think he was completely oblivious, but he hadn't noticed it at all. No, perhaps he was in denial and didn't want to see it. You expect me to believe you when you acted so much like an asshole. I don't know what you're talking about, but you were the one who started acting like an asshole. You have truly peculiar tastes. Teasingly pressing his lips against the reddened ear, Alok must have felt ticklish, he exhaled a few short breaths and then said. Just think of me as being sensitive towards trends. That's amusing. Considering what you were saying just a moment ago. Don't mock your customer, I'll fi, he probably wanted to say he would fire him, but Klopp couldn't let that happen. There had been cases where Klopp resigned beforehand, but there had been no instances of him getting fired. So he prevented that from happening. With one arm tightly pulling his waist close, he firmly grabbed the back of Alok's neck with his other hand, making sure he couldn't turn his head and avoid him. Then Klopp swallowed those seemingly soft lips. As their breaths became slower, they began making wet sounds. Just as he imagined, no, even beyond his imagination. Alok's lips were incredibly soft and supple. After lightly pressing his lips against the slightly cool lips, he parted them and then pressed again, extending his tongue inside. He explored the warm and smooth interior of the lips, going deeper. As the kiss deepened, Alok showed a daring move and thrust his tongue forward. He naturally placed his other hand on Klopp's arm and drew him closer. Contrary to the teasing and mocking from before, their kiss made him feel like he knew everything about him. Klopp's arms strengthened around the body that fit so perfectly in his arms. While at it, he slid his knee forward and slipped between Alok's slender and firm legs. As he grazed the hardened center with his thigh, Alok, who had been engrossed in the kiss, suddenly gasped and pulled away. His blue eyes, which were melting in the kiss a moment ago, suddenly flashed with fear. Stop. Why? Klopp, who was earnestly exploring his graceful body, was taken aback when Alok suddenly broke the kiss and wiped his lips with the back of his hand. He felt a bit offended, but he ignored it and tried to wrap his arms around his waist again, only to be forcefully pushed away by Alok with all his might this time. As Klopp lost his balance due to the sudden attack, Alok quickly opened the door and fled. Klopp just watched, dumbfounded, until the sound of the distant footsteps brought him back to his sense. He chased after Alok, but it was too late. Alok. Ignoring his call, Alok quickly got on the Count's waiting carriage. The carriage departed immediately before Klopp could catch up. It disappeared into the distance, slicing through the cold and heavy night air. This was unbelievable. The sensation of their lips touching hadn't even faded. Damn it. What the hell was that? After how he drove me crazy. Klopp wanted to chase after him immediately, but he couldn't leave the office, which was littered with important documents everywhere. While cursing, 
Klopp returned with heavy footsteps, forcefully shut the office door, and locked it from the inside. Then he sat down at his desk, but he couldn't even see the documents in front of him. Why did he suddenly run away like that? Seeing his frightened look at the last moment, it seemed to be a belated rejection from his body memory. It would clearly be pathetic of him to run back to his estate now. Moreover, until now, he had never been rejected in such a way by anyone, so it even hurt his pride. Despite having broken up with Raphael not too long ago, his thoughts were consumed entirely by Alok. He tried to focus on work, but he failed. He had to masturbate himself to the lingering scent left by the mean guy who suddenly appeared out of nowhere, played with him, and then disappeared. Damn it. Now it has come to this. After he finished, while sitting back and staring blankly at the ceiling, Klopp had thought. Since it had come to this, he decided to accept it, be true to his instincts, and resolve not to give up regardless of how the other person will respond. Uploading this part several hours earlier than usual because I will be busy tonight, thank you for your understanding uwu make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Dot. Volume 2 Chapter 6.3 the right one runs away you are listening at novel full dot audio. It was a dark and chilly room. The bed was extremely hard and covered with slightly rough sheets. However, that didn't matter at all. On the hard bed, a person with an overwhelmingly fragrant scent was lying down, gasping for breath. He struggled on the bed, clutching the sheets with his skinny hands and clinging to a worn dot out pillow. Every now and then he made a small sound. Part cry, part moan, the voice was thin and dry, but just hearing it stirred him. His loose pajamas had ridden up, exposing half of his chest. It was clearly evident that he was a man, but his chest had slightly swelled. He reached out his hand to touch the rounded nipple with his palm while looking at the man's chest. The man's moans grew louder. He tightly closed his eyes and bit his lip. Occasionally, he flailed as if in agony. Blue bruises adorned his protruding skinny shoulder through the loose pajamas, and bite marks were clearly visible on his withered neck. The man was so pitiful that he felt compassion for him, but instead of comforting him, his hand lifted one of his skinny legs and plunged deeper and harder. His neck, rattling helplessly, seemed like it would break at any moment. He despised him greatly. He couldn't quite remember the reason. As it was a dream. Clearly, it was just a dream. He simply acted violently and roughly because he wanted him to suffer. The leg hanging over his shoulder was so blue and black with bruises that it was barely visible. There were old bruises discoloring his tightly closed eyes. He felt the impulse to leave another red mark there. The man, noticing my intention, looked at him with fearful eyes. Blue eyes. I know those eyes. The pale blonde hair, the blotched face, the bloodied lips. I laughed cruelly as he was trembling in fear. And I whispered sweetly like a demon. I hope you suffer as much as I do. I hope you face such a miserable death just like he did. The man's blue eyes trembled. He thought those blue eyes would burst outward, but they imploded inside like a jade crystal. His pupils gaped like cavities in the ocean sucking all the moisture out of her eyeballs. As the moisture of the watery cornea drained, it became hazy like that of a dying fish. His spine tingled. His breath became shallow and rough as if his diaphragm had been torn apart. He couldn't understand why he was the one to suffer from the cruel words he had thrown at the person he hated. Something was wrong. The incomprehensible pain only fueled his sadistic urges. He violated him even more. The man went down without a single struggle. It was as if he had to be that way. As if he had no worth to be respected. He was completely different from the man he knew. Darkness filled the surroundings, and the only thing that filled the room inside was the climax full of hatred and pain. Embracing the man's frail body, he filled him with his marks. Breathing heavily, he collapsed onto the man. The man then spoke, his unfocused gaze cast into the air, having endured the violence the entire time. 
you're pressing the child. Upon hearing those words, he shifted slightly, not surprised to learn that the Alpha was pregnant. He touched the man's exposed belly with his hand. The man's body was so skinny that the joints were visible, but his belly, differently, was swelling. He smiled with satisfaction. Don't worry, you're fine. His lifeless, glass dot like eyes still stared into the empty space. Look at me, see how I'm turning into a demon because of you. Are you happy now that you're having my child? Ha! Huh. Alok. His eyes flashed open and he jumped to his feet. Taking a deep breath, he felt around with his hand. It wasn't a hard bed or rough sheets. And he was alone on the bed. Looking around, he realized it was his room in the new house he'd just moved into. What the hell, another dream. This is really driving me crazy. Klopp rubbed his face with both hands. It took a while for his startled heart to calm down. He had gotten up so abruptly that his neck muscles were stiff and knotted. He massaged his neck and shoulders with his hands and stood up from the bed. Looking out the window, he saw that it was still early in the morning, far from sunrise. Klopp poured himself a glass of water from the table and sat back down on the bed. Why do I keep having these crazy dreams? Lo the dream was truly killing him. Dreams were said to be the result of the unconscious mind, but to hate Alok so much, to trample him until he was broken, and then to fantasize about impregnating him. He was definitely going insane. However, it wasn't that he couldn't understand those feelings either. His hatred for Alok was growing in reality, and in proportion to that, his desire for him was steadily growing too. The problem was that the dream went far beyond his psychological welfare and unconscious desires. They were brutal and horrifying enough to be called nightmares. It felt like he had developed a mental disorder. The parts that he couldn't bear the most were the curses that he spoke as if his heart had frozen up and Alok's swollen belly. He hadn't had an easy life so far, but it hadn't been such a hard life that he could dream of such brutal violence. Although he occasionally vented his frustrations through trivial outbursts, there was no reason to hate Alok so much, who hadn't caused him any harm. Moreover, wasn't Alok an alpha? To dream of impregnating an alpha, Klopp was worried that he might truly go crazy at this rate. As he thought so, Klopp pondered deeply. It would be a big problem if he turned back halfway and did something foolish. One incident was enough. As soon as the sun rose, let's go to the estate. Let's get this settled. With that determination, he lay back on the bed, but the bed that had been comfortable just a moment ago felt uncomfortable. It was the same no matter what position he took. He started memorizing legislation laws silently in his mind while cursing internally. It was because he felt ashamed to think about Alok and masturbate again this late at night. After a while, his mind started to drift away, and Klopp was finally able to fall asleep in a comfortable position. Contrary to his determination, due to his restless sleep, he woke up much later than usual. He had an appointment with another client in the morning, so he had no choice but to head there. By the time he returned to the office and hastily finished the paperwork, it was already late afternoon. Klopp ticked off the things that needed to be taken care of and then went through the filing cabinet for T-Wind. Lately, Alok's overspending had decreased, which resulted in a significant decrease in his work. However, he still received substantial financial agent fees regularly, which made him feel a bit guilty. In fact, regular visits and discussions were mandatory, even if they weren't personal. Before, he had tried to avoid visiting the estate by all means, but today he voluntarily left his office. When he arrived at the estate, the butler, who always treated him with his usual snarky demeanor, opened the door for him. Where is Alok? Count T. Wind is currently busy. We need to discuss the financial issues. Even if he's busy, tell him to make time. The butler frowned slightly at the curt response, but he soon bowed and turned away. Klopp was guided to the study. He placed the documents on the desk and stared intently at Early Summer, a part of the painting series that he had seen before. Since their first kiss, 
Klopp had made numerous efforts to meet Alok. However, every time he came, Alok was absent. He even claimed to have traveled somewhere outside the city. At first, Klopp thought it was just a coincidence, but later he became convinced. Alok was clearly avoiding him. When he first realized that, he thought, he could be doing that. He had agonized over it for a long time before admitting it to himself. He denied it dozens of times. It's never easy to give in to a persistent desire, therefore Klopp could understand Alok's reluctance as an alpha. However, understanding was one thing, and avoiding him like this was a separate issue. Their relationship had already passed that of an employer and an employee. Being fearful about it and pretending that nothing had happened wasn't going to change anything. Avoiding it wouldn't solve anything. Eventually, no matter which way things went, the two of them needed to have a conversation. Only then could Klopp have at least a chance. Regardless of what Alok was thinking, there was a need to appeal to him and let him know how much Klopp was attracted to him. In other words, he wanted a chance to pursue him. Klopp had already let him burst into his office, and Alok had given him an opportunity. They even kissed, so at the very least, it would be only fair to let Klopp have a chance. After waiting for a long time, Klopp no longer had a painting to look at, so he took out a book. By the time he turned over a few pages, Alok belatedly appeared. Now, no longer in the mood to be angry, Klopp stared at him intently. Alok glanced briefly in his direction and then sat in an armchair far away from the sofa where Klopp was sitting. What are you doing there? I said I was busy. Why did you come? I won't bite you, so come sit closer. I can hear you loud and clear even from there. And why would I be avoiding you? I just really like this chair. Alok stubbornly persisted while glaring at Klopp. It was unbelievable, what was wrong with him? Klopp closed the book, placed it on the table, and stood up from his seat. If the other person was avoiding him, then he should be the one to approach the other person. As he did so, Alok was startled and quickly moved to a different spot. So, you are avoiding me. W. Well, I just suddenly remembered a book I have to read. Alok nervously rummaged through the nearby bookshelf. Klopp smiled as he saw Alok pretending to act naturally while continuing to keep his attention on Klopp. Knowing that Alok was paying attention to him like that gave him confidence. Before Alok's hand could randomly pick up any book, Klopp got behind the golden dot haired count's back. And his hand overlapped the lithe hand reaching towards a book. Hmm, a guide to childcare. Let me know if you have a secret child. Because they need to be included in the inheritance. Ah, it's not that book. It's the one next to it. Prenatal education for aristocrats. Are you pregnant? As Klopp glanced downward, Alok's expression froze, and he mumbled in disbelief. D. Don't joke around. It was just out of curiosity because a relative of mine is pregnant. And back off. You perverted jerk. But I don't want to. Klopp's provocation intensified when he was directly confronted with the issue he had been contemplating himself. So he strongly pulled Alok closer, seizing his wrists as Alok defiantly resisted. Using his advantageous position, Klopp confined Alok between himself and the bookshelf. His sapphire dot like eyes were avoiding him. Alok's golden eyelashes trembled slightly. At that moment, the dream from last night came to his mind. Klopp didn't want his unconsciousness to seep in like this. In fact, he wanted to leave it as a dream forever. He didn't like the fact that the man, who usually gave him a straight gaze, was unable to meet his eyes out of fear. He didn't want to force anything towards him. He desired a partner who had free will, not someone who succumbed to his power or fears. It was enough to see the other person being deprived of freedom, constrained, and withering away in his dreams. Alok furrowed his brow and bit his lip but couldn't ask Klopp to let him go. All the teasing and somewhat playful feelings that had been there vanished completely. Klopp released his grip on Alok's wrists and took a few steps back. I'm sorry. You ignorant tyrant. 
I'll admit that. Since he had never shown such a gentle side before, so Klopp had to accept that criticism. Alok, who seemed a little surprised at his admittance, once again directed his gaze at Klopp. The blue eyes stared at him in distrust, so Klopp tried his best to display a genuine smile to show his pure intentions that held no ulterior motives. However, the skepticism in the other's eyes only deepened. With a short sigh, Klopp spoke. I wish you would at least tell me the reason you're avoiding me. Do I have to tell you for you to know? A top graduate isn't that smart after all. Well, I didn't major in dating at university. At the mention of the word, dating, Alok widened his eyes again in disbelief. Klopp didn't realize Alok was so easy to get surprised and teased. Klopp found it puzzling why Alok always concealed himself behind the same mask dot like smile when his expressive face was so much more natural and charming. What do you mean by dating? You just broke off your engagement not too long ago. And your eyes must be blind. I'm an alpha. What's important is that my engagement was called off, it's not relevant how long ago it was. And my eyes are perfectly fine. You are undoubtedly an alpha. Then why are you doing this to me? Honestly, it was Klopp himself who wanted to know the answer to that. He had lived as a perfectly healthy alpha for over 20 years with outstanding abilities, but he had never considered himself to deviate significantly from average in terms of other physical conditions. It wasn't uncommon for alphas to be this tall and well dot built. Until now, Klopp had never felt any attraction towards other alphas, and all the people he had dated were omegas, regardless of their height, appearance, or gender. That's why he was rather taken aback and confused by the sexual urge he felt towards Alok now. This urge of wanting to be all dot naked and intimate with him. However, answering this way to that question wouldn't help much in this situation. My vision is fine, but my sense of smell is a bit off. And also, my brain is a little affected. Strangely, I keep perceiving you as an omega. Although it was a self-deprecating remark, Alok froze completely, as if he had seen a ghost. He stumbled a little, leaning against the bookshelf for support. Alok. As Klopp furrowed his brows and called out to him, Alok's face grimaced as if he were about to cry. Then, with a suppressed voice that barely came out, he spoke. I. I can't do this for a second time, I, don't want to go through, that again. As per requested by the site owner, I will be moving explicit scenes to Wattpad from now on. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 6.4 the right one runs away you are listening at novel full dot audio. Klopp never figured out what happened that was so horrible that Alok never want to go through it again. Alok's condition looked very unwell, and in the end, he refused Klopp, retreating to a corner as if he were having a seizure. Klopp tried to approach him, crouching down and trying to embrace him to provide comfort, but Alok panicked and evaded him, fleeing to a different corner. Thus, Klopp couldn't say anything more. The intense rejection caused excruciating pain that felt like a knife twisting in his gut, but he didn't show it outward. Seeing Alok so terribly afraid of him gave him a painful and strange urge to cut himself, instead of succumbing to anger and violence out of frustration. He truly seemed to have lost his mind. The investment plan and related documents for this month are on the desk. Look them over. Sign them, and bring them to me. Alok continued to turn away. The air in the study, which had been perfectly fine until a moment ago, felt as if it were laced with poison, corroding his lungs with each breath. His exhaled breath carried a pungent smell of burning flesh. Klopp couldn't stay in such a suffocating space any longer. Klopp, with his head throbbing and his vision blurred, took as fast steps as he could, half running, to escape from that hellish place. Passing by the bewildered servants who were looking at him strangely, he leaped out of the entrance of the estate into the cooler air, and only then did he loosen the tie around his neck and draw in a ragged breath. Even though he hadn't taken more than a few breaths of the contaminated air, he felt a surge of nausea twisting inside him. He hurriedly walked, 
clutching onto the trunk of a nearby tree in the darkness, crouching down, and finally vomited out. Although he hadn't eaten anything, after gagging out some strange, lump. Like substance, he felt slightly relieved, but immediately his esophagus burned as if it were on fire. Since the corners of his mouth were wet, he took out a handkerchief and wiped his lips before returning to the entrance. One of the footmen, who had seen him rushing out, quickly prepared a carriage. Thank you. Sir. Bandike. There's blood on your lips, the footman, startled, pointed at Klopp with his finger, forgetting his rudeness. Only then did Klopp look down at the handkerchief and was surprised. The white handkerchief was covered in blood. Although he was horrified, he naturally folded the handkerchief inside out and wiped his lips, saying, I think I have a small cut on my lips. Then he turned his body toward the carriage. Just as he was getting on the carriage, he suddenly felt a gaze on him and raised his head to look at the lit window nearby. Alok was standing there, watching him. With one hand against the window, he looked as if he were crying. The denial from earlier had already disappeared. He was just staring at Klopp with eyes full of pain and sadness. I guess he would need some time. Klopp held his blood-soaked handkerchief and got on the carriage. The carriage quickly left the estate. It was the first time he had vomited blood. Although he was an aristocrat, he didn't have much support. He knew very well that his greatest asset since he came to study in the city was his healthy body, so he always moved within reasonable limits without pushing himself too hard. But now, all of a sudden, he was vomiting blood. Perhaps it was a serious illness. His sense of smell had become strange, and his brain was running wild. Maybe this was something more than just being drawn to Alok, maybe it was a sign of some illness. He really needed to see a doctor. The doctor's diagnosis was nothing special. There was no specific illness, and it was simply that the psychological pressure was affecting my body and causing gastric bleeding. The prescription he gave was to reduce work and rest well. A vacation would even be better. But that doctor was wrong. This wasn't caused by work or even rest. It was true that it was due to psychological pressure, but it wasn't caused by overwork. There was only one thing pressuring him, and that was Alok T. Wind. It was somewhat surprising even for Klopp to think about it. To put it more bluntly, he could only laugh at the absurdity of it all. He hadn't realized how much he'd fallen for Alok. Just as Alok said, he hadn't even broken off his engagement not too long ago, but Klopp was craving him so much, to the point of vomiting blood. He should have realized it when he started having those strange dreams every night and thinking about every move and word from Alok. This was an abyss with no answer. If Klopp gets rejected by Alok again, he would surely dry up and die. So Klopp tried his best to be cautious. More than that, the fever in his body was rising because Alok was avoiding him like he was a bug. Alok was being desperate. Klopp was certain that Alok had some feelings for himself, but now he was more confused. They talked without confirming that fact, the conversation was full of just exchanging nonsense, so he began to doubt if it was not another misunderstanding on his part. At that, his stomach dropped to the floor. There was only one time Klopp had felt good since meeting Alok. It was that one time when they kissed. If it wasn't for that kiss, Klopp might have had a seizure by now. Even though it was also because of that kiss that he was vomiting blood now. In order to discuss financial matters, Klopp tried to visit the estate, but Alok made excuses not to meet him. The one to greet Klopp was the cold butler. He wrote a note among the documents that would reach Alok saying, are you not going to see my face anymore, but he received no response. He undoubtedly got his heart broken. Probably, it was during the soiree, and whoever it was must have deeply wounded Alok. He wanted to find out who it was and burn them alive. It had to be an Omega, but he couldn't guess who it was. Is it that woman in the green dress? Should I get information on her? Klopp clicked his tongue when he realized he'd been absent-mindedly dotting the paperwork he was filling out. B. Noel that him he didn't want to provoke Alok if possible, but
but sometimes he felt like he was going to die after swallowing a gulp of blood, so he used the documents as an excuse to visit the estate. Inside the rushing carriage, half dot losing his mind, Claw presented Alok. Alok is so skillful in kissing and had so much sex with that Omega to the point their sense mingled, but he doesn't want to do any of it now. I'm not interested in a body that has been sleeping around everywhere with everyone too. He gritted his teeth for nothing. Klopp felt like a dog that had a delicious treat snatched away right in front of its nose, but he denied that he was delirious with the desire to fuck Alok. It was more of he firmly believed that he wasn't, but soon his patience would reach its limit. All right, I'll admit it. If he couldn't fuck Alok, he felt like he would go insane. He wanted to pound into Alok mercilessly until those sweet tears streamed down from his eyes. He would fuck him while licking his tears that tasted like sugar water. He was fantasizing endlessly in his half-dot-crazy mind, yet Alok was nowhere to be seen. His patience, which had now been laid bare and dried up, couldn't hold him back from his rampage. Thinking that Alok would be inside the estate, if he managed to catch him there, he would make sure his legs wouldn't be able to move for the whole day right then and there. He pushed aside the servants who tried to stop him and thoroughly searched the estate, but there was no sign of Alok. Klopp turned to the butler with a murderous fury in his eyes. Where is that bastard? The butler seemed slightly startled by his threatening tone, but he calmly replied. The count has gone on a holiday. A holiday? Yes. The count occasionally takes a week off to rest at his countryside villa. Where is that? I don't know that either. Klopp grabbed the butler by the collar and shook him, but the butler held on, saying he didn't know. It didn't seem like he would open his mouth even if Klopp pressed further, and his demeanor suggested that he really didn't know, so Klopp let him off the hook. However, swallowing blood inside his throat, Klopp didn't forget to warn the butler, making a face enough to be called a demon. The butler spoke with a cold glare. The Count will not return here for a while. Please refrain from entering the estate in the future. All right. Just wait until I find Alok. Ignoring whatever the butler said, Klopp left the estate. The newly hired coachman opened the door for him. As he got on the carriage, Klopp raised his hand and gave his farewell to the butler through the window. If he actually knew and was hiding Alok, there might be two dead bodies today. One from fatal assault and the other from rape. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 7.1 Mad Dog Hunt and finally mine you are listening at novelfull.audio. Once again, Klopp was busy with work. Now there was nothing but work. He needed to save money so he could capture Alok and build a cage to lock him up. Ah, I feel like I'm going crazy. Klopp, who had just written Alok T. Wind on an important document, sighed as he threw his pen. It had already been two months since he last saw Alok. If this continued, he might really go crazy because of his unfulfilled desires or burst out in anger and vomit blood to his death. Occasionally, he spent some nights with Omegas, but it didn't help at all. It only made him thirstier, as if he had drunk salt water. Now, unable to endure any longer, he put on his jacket and left the office. Picking up the cane by the door, he descended the stairs with determined steps. It was late in the evening, and he walked home without taking a carriage. It was a long way home, but not impossible to walk, and it was a pleasant change of pace when his feelings were complicated. The streets changed little by little as he walked. The office was in the downtown area while his house was in the suburbs, and in between, aside from storefronts and residential streets, there are dark back alleys and brothels. Most people would take a detour, but Klopp didn't have enough stamina to go back, so he kept going straight. His gloved hand tightened around the cane. Not long after entering the shady, smelly alleyway, a group of drugged Omega whores and prostitutes appeared out of nowhere, some with their legs up, some with their breasts out. However, it was a very unpleasant sight for Klopp. Looking into their lifeless eyes, a strange frustration arose as if something would come to mind, but it never did. Throughout the walk, 
he tried to figure out what was bothering him, but it was like digging deeper into a seal that had been tightly put on, the more he delved, the more it hid its traces, and he ended up forgetting what he was trying to recall. As his mind was wandering off, his legs kept moving on their own, taking him to unknown paths. But he was used to this. Where is this again? Klopp frowned. He was in a deep alley in the slums called the Bottom Place, and there were no streetlights. He spotted a run-down bakery at the far end, and the dying light emanating from it was all that was visible. As he approached that place to ask for directions, two men who looked like alphas appeared from the opposite alley where Klopp was. They glanced at the well-dressed stranger walking down the dark street, then turned their heads quickly when they saw the cane in his hand. Then they entered the bakery. When Klopp reached the bakery with neither a slow nor fast pace, the bakery owner was just about to close the shutters. When Klopp stopped him from closing the door with his cane, the rather fierce looking owner threw a gruff remark. What? The bakery is closed. I want to ask for directions. Which way should I go to get to the riverside from here? While putting a few coins on the counter and asking in informal speech, the bakery owner quickly snatched them and gestured, saying, that way. Klopp, who saw the direction the owner pointed to, glanced towards the bakery's owner to give a nod of thanks. But then he saw the two men he had seen earlier sitting at a table inside the bakery. It was a small shop, and the neighborhood was quiet as if there were no rats around, so he could clearly hear their loud voices. That Omega guy appeared again. He came to get some drugs. I gave him some for now. How did that rich guy, who looks like he has never been here in his life, know that you sell drugs? I don't know either. Maybe he sent his servants to find out. Isn't that dangerous? It could be a crackdown. No, but there's a lot of people who've been turned into half-idiots by an unknown demon lately. Maybe he's connected to it. We'll see about that. At that point, the bakery owner looked at him and asked, Do you need anything else? The men on the opposite side saw him and turned their heads to look in the other direction. No. Goodbye, then. He exchanged nods and turned away. The bakery owner, who had been watching Klopp move away, quickly closed the shutters and shouted to his two friends. Where's that Omega? You should keep an eye on him to make sure there won't be any trouble. Klopp was feeling a little tired, so he wanted to just leave. To this unknown demon, these guys were not the only targets. However, considering that an Omega, who didn't seem to fit into this world at all, could suffer from their actions, Klopp couldn't simply ignore it. When Klopp first started walking across the streets of the bottom place, he easily dealt with those who provoked him. It didn't take long for word to get around at the burly, upper-dot-class alpha who occasionally showed up with a cane had tremendous skills. At first, some troublemakers tried to confront him with their strength, but when once he unleashed the full force of his boiling anger, they no longer challenged him in the streets. It was a bit regrettable. The men, realizing that Klopp would just walk past them as long as they didn't intentionally provoke him, didn't pay any attention to Klopp anymore. They soon resumed their dirty and despicable acts as usual. And Klopp didn't care what they did among themselves. However, things were different when he saw two alphas, who seemed to have spent their lives in the slums, sexually assaulting an Omega woman on the street. The crime he abhorred the most was a bunch of low.lives mad dogs assaulting an Omega. He couldn't remember anything, from the moment he locked eyes with the terrified woman who was too scared to cry, until the next moment when two alphas, their heads cracked open, ran away half. Crawling. When he came to his senses, there was blood splattered on his cane, and the pitiful woman with torn clothes was shaking in fear as if she had seen a demon. At that moment, Klopp was also slightly taken aback and quickly left the scene. He then had gone to bed, putting aside Martha's worried nagging when she saw the bloody cane that day. He seemed to have recalled the count. It was highly irrational of him to recall Alok T. Wind, a person of high position who was usually enjoying luxurious feasts and having numerous servants, when he saw the miserable female prostitute being sexually assaulted by multiple people in the alley. 
From then on, something must have gone wrong in his brain. Clasping his cane to his armpit, Klopp pulled on his gloves to make sure his long and thick fingers were able to move freely. He observed the bakery from the darkness. A while later, the two men and the bakery owner came out. They looked around and began to scurry about, looking everywhere, and Klopp quietly followed them. They were very cautious and turned around several times in the confusing alleys. It was impossible to not get found out and lose track of the bottom place dwellers who moved quickly in this maze. Like place. They probably realized that someone was following them, they soon split into three directions and Klopp eventually lost track of them. He was overwhelmed by great anger and unbearable anxiety. He had to find them. If not, feeling like he was already exposed, Klopp searched the alleys without caring to lower down the sound of his footsteps. Sometimes he even ran lightly. However, he couldn't find them anywhere. At the height of his impatience, Klopp managed to reach the center of the bottom place. It was a shabby, dirty place, nothing like the city center where his office was located, but at least it had wide streets and street lamps. He saw groups of people sitting together around the outdoor tables, drinking cheap alcohol. He was about to go over to them and ask if they had seen an unfamiliar Omega or the bakery owner when he spotted a face he recognized. It was quite a surprise to find him here. While Klopp himself was an unwelcome presence in the bottom place, that person was alien here in every sense of the word. Sitting confidently at the outdoor table, listening to the person in front of him, his silver eyes widened like a wolf when he spotted Klopp. A moment later, Klopp followed the brusque man who was guiding him. The man was a servant of that guy from earlier, and without saying a word, the man carried a torch and briskly walked through the alley, turning here and there. Is this the right way? Dot to the questioning words, he only nodded his head. His appearance was rough, but for some reason, he seemed trustworthy. Still, Klopp had no idea how men like him and the Marquis knew each other. Above all, what surprised him was that the man was willing to help him. I'm not fond of those guys either. Although the Marquis only said those words, he seemed too cooperative considering his previous weird hostility towards Klopp. He even arranged for someone to guide him. It seemed like he knew the bottom place well, like a man with many hidden secrets. But that wasn't important to Klopp at the moment. Right now, it was more important to him to hunt down the mad dogs. That wolf would come after the dogs were caught. There, that's the person you're looking for. The man pointed to a narrow alley with his stoic words. As they approached closer, he could hear a lot of chatter in the usually dreary alley. Giggling laughter and the sound of hurried footsteps. Klopp grasped his cane and looked at the man, then the man placed the torch on the ground. I'll stay here and keep watch. It would be troublesome if they ran away. You can keep going. This is the final chapter of Volume 2. There will be four parts. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. Volume 2 Chapter 7.2 Mad Dog Hunt and finally mine you are listening at NovelFull.audio. The alley was very dark, but the outlines were still barely distinguishable. Someone dashed towards a dead dot end wall in the distance. The men were too focused on pestering the fleeing guy from behind, unaware of the figure appearing behind them. The hooded person in a cloak reached the dead end and looked back. Hey, you Omega. Let me fuck you once for three silver coins, huh? This body will become your lover. The three men exchanged vulgar remarks and laughed. The person they referred to as an Omega stood silently, unmoving. You're emitting such a sweet scent, you must be on your heat. Don't consume those drugs and just spend a good time with me. Me fucking you once will be enough to end your heat. They say aristocratic omegas are a delicacy because they're soft. Why don't you show some kindness to these poor bottom place dwellers? As the alphas closed in, the omega suddenly rushed forward. It seemed like an attempt to push them away and escape, but to Klopp's eyes, it was futile. The omega, now caught in the clutches of the alphas, couldn't even scream. 
The alphas covered the omega's mouth and tried to force that person down to the ground. Let go of that person. At the chilling warning from behind, the startled alphas jumped up from their positions. Meanwhile, the omega managed to stand up and attempted to flee. Startled and unable to see this side properly, the omega pulled down their hood tighter and glanced back at the alphas standing behind. Running with increasing speed, the omega collided with Klopp in the end. The Omega was staggering backward, so Klopp reflexively supported that person by the waist. A sweet scent permeated through the fluttering cloak. The feeling of the Omega's waist against his arm was surprisingly familiar. Moreover, this scent. This couldn't be possible. He had clearly stated that he was at his countryside villa. There was no reason for him to be chased by those kinds of people in such a dangerous place. But his instinct told him otherwise. The person who was captured and stiffened in his grip was none other than that guy. Klopp quickly removed the hood. And he met those blue eyes, as shocked as his eyes. A lock. Klopp was too shocked to comprehend the situation. Even though A lock was standing right in front of him, Klopp couldn't believe it. He couldn't speak. And A lock seemed so terrified looking at Klopp. He looked at the dazed person who was holding him and then regained his senses. He tried to push away the arms wrapped around his waist. In the midst of Alok struggling to escape, Klopp also quickly regained his senses. He held on to Alok's waist firmly so he couldn't escape. Let go of me. You'll die if you run away. The warning was so cold that even his own lips froze as he spoke it. His hands clenched at his waist, and Alok shuddered, then fell silent. He relaxed his body and leaned slightly against Klopp. The sweet scent became even stronger. He felt a surge of anger that Alok had such a sweet scent that he was mistaken for an Omega, and he wanted to rip his throat out right now. Meanwhile, the thugs approached them. What's this? That Omega is my wife. Give me five silver coins since you touched him. They sneered, drawing their daggers. Without a word, Klopp took out the pouch of silver coins he always carried and threw it on the ground. With a thud, the pouch burst open and the silver coins spilled over. There were at least thirty of them. With greedy eyes, they licked their lips and said, have fun with him and turned to leave. One of them, with a peculiar expression, whispered something to the bakery owner as if he knew Klopp. They exchanged meaningful glances and were just about to pass by. Wait. I need to ask you something. Moving the foolish count who was wandering alone in the streets to his back, Klopp fixed his cane and held it tightly. The men who were about to pass by after picking up the pouch, turned around with fierce expressions and asked, What? Klopp smiled politely and asked. Did you say this person is your wife? He's my wife but I haven't fucked him many times, so his hole is still tight. You'll have some fun with him. Keck, before he could finish his sentence, he looked wide that eyed at the blade that was embedded in his abdomen. Then he looked at the cane handle connected to the bloodied blade, and the gloved hand that was twisting it little by little, and finally raised his head slowly to see Klopp smiling at him. Say it again. Who is whose wife? Ugh. Silver coins fell from his trembling hand. One of the men fell to the ground and writhed, causing the other two to panic. It's murder. They pulled out their daggers and swung them wildly. Pushing Alok back into the alley, Klopp raised his sword. No matter how thick their bones were from living in the bottom place, they were no match for the formally dot trained swordsmanship. One of them swung his dagger but ended up getting stabbed in the arm. Losing his balance, he stumbled backward and fell over the corpse of his dead comrade. Before he could even scream, his throat was pierced. Seeing this, the bakery owner turned white and fled toward the entrance of the alley. Just as Klopp was about to chase after him, the bakery owner was struck in the back of the head by a heavy weapon that appeared out of nowhere. The servant of the Marquis revealed himself and expressionlessly gestured toward the other corpses. Klopp walked over to Alok, who was standing on the other side of the alley. 
Shocked and unable to take his eyes off the dead bodies the Marquis servant was dragging, he took two steps back as Klopp stepped within arm's reach. His blue eyes were filled with terror. At that moment, Klopp felt as if his stomach, which had been calm for the past few days, was being turned upside down again. The taste of iron seeped into his throat. He tried to smile, barely swallowing the lump in his throat, but it didn't work. Hot blood continued to drip from the cane blade in his hand. It was only natural for Alok to be afraid of him. However, he couldn't stay like this here forever. Klopp reached out his hand. His suppressed, chilling voice and rigid tone had long gone beyond his control. But if he didn't force himself to do so, he felt like Alok would collapse right there. Come here. White as a sheet, Alok looked at the outstretched hand, then stared back up at Klopp. His expression was extremely complex. Fear, pain, sadness. The arrogance and sneering attitude he had seen before had disappeared, replaced by an overwhelming sorrow that was too deep to even look into. Each moment of facing Alok was a pain that burned Klopp alive. Why? Why, do I have to feel these emotions for him? Why do I reach out to him, knowing that I will be rejected yet again? Just like his previous lover, he was certain that Alok would turn away from his violent and cruel nature. He hadn't even tried to reflect on himself before coincidentally meeting Alok today. The blood that had trickled down his spine pooled in his gut. His head was spinning and his body was weak, unable to support his outstretched arm. As his arm slowly began to slide down, Alok took a step forward. While still staring at Klopp, he took another step, reaching out his hand and grabbing the dangling arm. Then he came closer and stood beside Klopp. Klopp didn't make a single move, afraid that if he did, Alok would escape. In the darkness, the sapphire eyes, shining like jewels, came right up to his face and soon disappeared behind his eyelids. Instead, soft blonde hair touched his chin. Taking in the scent that he had missed so much, Klopp embraced the person who had willingly fallen into his arms. Having been shocked in various ways, Alok's steps were entangled. And Klopp himself was having a hard time walking, as he was in an aroused state because of the murder, the relief of finally having Alok, and the scent of Alok's body that gave him a hard dot on. Before they could exit the bottom place and make it to the main street below, the Marquis's servant ushered them outside. Don't worry about the aftermath. We'll take care of it from this side. Despite his blunt words, he was kind enough to hold the carriage for them. When Klopp thanked him, his reply was, please thank the Lord, not me. It was clear that the Lord he referred to was Marquis Wolflake. Klopp never imagined he would find himself in debt to him, relying on someone he once thought of as a strange guy who ignited enmity for no reason. But he also hadn't expected to find Alok, who was impossible to find, to be wandering the bottom place, nor had he expected to stumble upon him and save him from the brink of rape. Another unexpected thing was how Alok was now sitting next to him, leaning wearily on his shoulder. As the word rape crossed his mind, Klopp felt a chill down his spine. His hands and feet trembled, and he didn't quite feel satisfied with killing those three bastards easily. He should have torn their flesh one by one and poured acid onto their exposed organs, melting them away. If it weren't for Alok being there, he might have actually done that. Klopp closed his eyes in exhaustion and embraced the person leaning on his shoulder, burying his nose in the soft blonde hair. The carriage soon arrived in front of his house. Careful not to wake the person in his arms, Klopp gently pulled the cloak he was wearing over him and cautiously carried him out of the carriage. He moved as gently as possible, but before he knew it, he heard a sleepy voice. Where are we? This isn't my estate. It's my house. What? Suddenly, Alok started to panic. Klopp set him down before he could fall down, and Alok ran his hand through his hair in a dejected manner. Call me a carriage. I need to go home. Klopp had no intention of letting him do so. He firmly grabbed Alok's wrist, who tried to escape, as he knocked on the front door and called for Martha. Make me feel happy and supported by leaving a comment. 